good Friday morning. So we'll just kind of jump right into this. Um, today's September 8th, Friday, and new from Relapse Records today is the latest from Dying Fetus. Make them big for death. Which, if you, one, if you have a local record store, definitely go to pick it up. Um, if you haven't heard it yet, stream it, buy it. Uh, there's a lot of really cool t-shirts on relapserecords.com for it. I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy that long sleeve one because I was like, man, I got, fucking, I got a weakness for long sleeves that have front, back, and sleeve print. I feel like you get so much more t-shirt. Oh, look, yeah, you get more bang for your buck for sure. Like, yeah, because like, you buy a one shirt and it's got like a logo on the front uh-huh. and you're like, oh, that's cool, but you get a back print sleeve print like i don't know i like all that extra stuff yeah when i was a kid i'd fucking do that shit like if i'm gonna pay spend 40 dollars back then for a hoodie man I, that motherfucker better have some shit on it you know yeah you don't want it to be like just a tiny little thing yeah. on the front and it's then funny. you're like wow i paid 40 dollars for a super small like iron and paste fucking yeah yeah <laughs> graphic hoodie yeah which is how some of those were back then, too. Oh, yeah, dude, super ghetto. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> four of these songs you could have listened to for a while. Four of them? Yeah. Really? I thought it was only two. Four. Oh. It was like I they considered it an EP. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't notice that. I guess I didn't look because I already have had the record for like two and a half yeah, weeks yeah. now. Basically, the whole first half of the album, except the first song, is that EP. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I see it's what crazy. you're saying. It's fucking... This is their 10th album? Yeah. 10th? Yep. It's a lot. Oh, yeah, they've been around for quite a bit. And, uh, I mean, it's surprising that... It's surprising and not surprising that a band like Dying Fetus, with their name and the content that they you know, have in their music, their artwork, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, from the outside looking in, if you're not in the metal world, you wouldn't think that this is a band that has a a long career like this. Yeah. Like, they've been around for 30-plus yeah. years. And uh, most people would be like, you know, at the time of them starting, they're like, oh, they ain't going to go anywhere. They ain't going to do anything. Which I'm sure happened to Death and Cannibal Corpse and, you know, right. all the bands that were in that echelon but it seems like dying fetus like really took it to the extreme with their name which i think deterred some people um to me that drew me in because i was like oh what's this about like that's oh for sure messed up crazy name yeah i was i want to hear what it's about 15 when destroy the opposition came out so and that's like i've that's you know my favorite album i guess i would say mine too but I guess not for like any really in particular reason because oh, they have. That, it's just like as soon as that album starts, it's like it's yeah, just, no, no. It, boom, the whole thing is great yeah. all the way through. But I'm not trying to take away from anything else that they put out because up until this album and including this album, everything that they've done has been awesome. They're yeah, like one of those bands that I really don't had miss. Any duds. But there's yeah. definitely been albums like. Uh, like purification through violence, I would say ranks on the lower tier for me. But oh, their first just, album, yeah, because yeah, it's not. But it's their first record. It's uh, not. Ref- it's not like a refined dying fetus sound yet. I don't. There's think. the groove wasn't there yet. I don't think. Like to me, it didn't feel. It felt like just a kind of thrashy, crazy, hectic death metal album, which, in its own right, is a good thing. But the groove that you know and love on like destroy the opposition was not in the band yet it didn't feel like to me well they've had so many changes with members and yeah and whatnot i was just pointing out that because the first dying fetus the name like that's that and uncle sam on the cover was totally the i was like what the fuck is this yeah you know what i mean and they that's why they named it Dying Fetus. They're like, we need to find the most offensive name, and it worked. Yeah, I remember I was in seventh or eighth grade, and I took this pair of light blue pants that I had and just like thick sharpied a bunch of band oh, names right all over them. 
because I didn't have patches or anything. Like, obviously, my mom wasn't going to go buy me a dying fetus patch. Right, right. Which is fucked up, because she bought my kid a dying fetus shirt for Christmas last year. And I was like, uh, Mom, when I was my son's age, I was trying, like, tooth and nail to get you to buy me that shit. Times you wouldn't are even changing. touch it. And now, like, he's getting, like, subjected to a beating shirts and all these shit. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I was like pressed to try to get one of these shirts as a kid and couldn't do it. I had to wait till I was yeah, an adult. Yeah, no, he get he gets them like gifted and shit. Yeah, you gotta like sneak around. To so I told get him, it. I'm like, you're lucky that I warmed up Grandma to all the heavy, like dark shit that you're into to make her more acclimated with it. Because when I was getting into it, it was like, turn that shit down. Right, right, right. I mean, she'd let me listen to it. She just didn't want to hear it. And I wasn't going to be wearing the shirts, depending on how offensive they were. And Dying Fetus was uh, the, one of the ones. Well, it's, and it's purposefully offensive, you know? Yeah. I mean, same as the... Uh, remember the Cradle of Filth shirt that said... The Jesus is a cunt yeah, shirt. Yeah, same reason. Yeah. Just I remember, to fuck with people. Yeah. I tried forever to get that shirt. I never owned it. You can buy, like, a reprint of it now. They remade them eventually. But I remember there used to be a dude around here that had one. The first time I seen one, I was like, that's an awesome shirt. Oh, yeah, Because it's just, like, it's, like, spitting in the face of, like, establishment and, like, religion and all that. And, like, people look at that and they're, like, disgusted. And in the metal community, you want shirts that do that. That's the point of some of these shirts. Like, I don't know about other people, but I always loved pissing people off with my t-shirts. I remember uh, my boy Mike copying. Actually, Mike might have been the guy that had yeah, the He shirt. had that shirt, and he would he wore it on Easter on purpose and, like, stood in front of um, St. Bernard's. St. Bernard's? St. Bernard's. Fucking dog. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and people were fucking upset. To say the least, and of yeah. course Mike was egging him on, but I, uh, I don't, I could have bought that shirt a few years ago, and I don't know if it's like as an adult, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, wear it. and that's why I'm like, man, I can't wear that. Yeah. As funny as it would be to like wear that to a like parent teacher conference, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah, like too. I don't want to be that too. guy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, but like. But I 16 still, year old me? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, 16, 15 year old me would have definitely had that shirt. But now, like in your 30s, you're like, eh, I got a kid. I'll let my kid wear the shirt. Right. Even though right. I, I guess I probably wouldn't let him wear it yet because he's only 13. But in due time, I would. Just not to school and like family events and shit like that, you know? Well, yeah, because they're just going to fuck with him. But Any, I mean, anyway, in our thirties, we're I mean, you have a mayhem shirt on. I have a dark throne yeah, shirt yeah. on, so we're still clearly rocking. Uh, oh yeah, dark I mean, band got, shirts. You know, got hand, like severed hands. You know, stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But anyways, back to the album. So, first playthrough. What did you think of the record? Typical dying fetus album. Which is not a bad thing. No, it's not just, a, just it, for reference. It wasn't. It's not a bad thing. I guess my first impression was. I just heard um, Wrong One to Fuck With, like, part two. Yeah. Especially on the first half of it. Right. Like, it seemed like the first, the A side of the record was a lot more, um, like, brutal, in-your-face, and thrashy. Kind of like how Wrong One to Fuck With was. Uh -huh. But then when you get to the end of side A, and then you start into side B, there's a lot more of that groove that starts to come in. Yeah, my... Uh... No, I didn't see. I just played it through, and I assume when I flipped it, and like you said, side two, I fucking when the tread ends, that's the name of the song. Mm -hmm. The I mean, first song on, on the... side on the B side, yeah, that's fuck. It's like oh, I love that side of the album because it's it go it goes all over the place. Well, it kind of felt like it took a piece from every record that they yeah, did yeah, before yeah. and then applied it to the new record. Exactly. Yeah. Which I thought was cool because you get like a little taste of every era of Dying Fetus. I like the um, snare sound on this album too a lot when he's doing the blast beats. However, they like that. It sounds fucking, I don't know, it just sounds fucking badass and it's like... It's not too loud, and it's like you can still hear. I don't know. I just notice. I always notice that. It's not a sane anger snare. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's funny that that's the term for the sound oh, that you don't want in right. a snare. 
Like people would be like, don't, don't give me that fucking St. Anger sound. <laughs> like, like, yep. Let me get an actual sound. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Now, what did you think, like, what did you think before you even popped it in? Like, as far as so cover and all that. just looking at it, like, when I seen, because I didn't see the album artwork until after the first video was released. Because they did the video for, I want to say, Feast of Ashes first, if I'm remembering that right. And, uh, or whatever the first single was that came out. I think that's what it was. You would think I would have wrote that down, but I didn't. Anyways, um, heard it. was like, okay, cool, new Dying Fetus. Happy to have that coming because the last record that they did was in 2017. So it's been like a while since they released something. But that's kind of the ongoing pattern. Like every five years for them seems to be a record popping yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, and that that because Rain Supreme was yeah reason they've been around forever, you know. Yeah, they're extending their career, and you don't want to have something come out like every month because then people are gonna be like, "Oh, we're sick of listening to yeah, this." Yeah, get burnt out. But I played wrong one to fuck with for like when it came out. That was in my regular rotation of things for at least the first year, and then I've played it numerous, numerous times since then. Die but, with Integrity is definitely one of my favorite fucking Dying Fetus songs, and that's on that album. Yeah. On uh, Wrong One to Fuck With? It, correct. Yeah. So when I first seen the record, when I first seen the album artwork, it made, it reminded me of like a, kind of like a Rob Zombie horror movie almost. Like it's got that 80s feel and look to it with the distressed cover and like it looks like it was a poster all folded up and bent into different creases and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the face itself just looks dirty, like kind of like Evil Dead-ish. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like that he's been fucking drug around a lot. Yeah, like the, the guy's been through some shit, and then they're finally like, I mean, it goes with the album name, Make Them Beg for Death. It's like you've been tortured for so long that you're begging yeah, for yeah, death. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I got like out of the cover, because like, this guy on there's got a knife to his throat. He's screaming. He's blindfolded. And his face is all fucked up. It looks like he's got, like, jaundice or some shit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, his teeth are all fucked up. But that's, like, the the ongoing theme with, like, Wrong One to Fuck With. The labels had, like, a dude that got curb stomped on it. And uh, the album cover had somebody just standing over a bloody mess. And the guy was, like, holding a, was it a crowbar or something or a hammer or whatever it was? I mean, one of the two. And, uh... I don't know. I like immediately as a horror fan, I was drawn to the album cover and the name of the album just because I thought that was a a very dark and interesting cool. Yeah, the name title for the title. The title's the shit. I wonder because you what... have to be like pretty fucked up to beg for death. Like the only situation that is that's going to happen in is if you're being tortured, or I guess if you're real, real, real depressed. But yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, I guess. I can think of some other reasons, but in this context, yeah, that yeah, if you've been beaten so bad or you give in. But now I wondered, like, you see a guy's fist with a knife to his throat, uh -huh. and did you notice it's like he has like Celtic style tattoos on his hands? Like, I always wondered. Oh yeah, yeah. Not always. I guess I've been wondering, like, if that has anything to do with anything, or is that just there? That's just yeah. I don't know. That'd be. It's hard to say. I liked how they took the old style Dying Fetus logo and then put the like the newer yeah. clean font inside of it. Yep. I thought that was a really cool twist because... Yeah, they just started doing that new logo like the last album before this one. Yeah, the the all like scratchy looking typical but, metal band type right. of thing. I don't, <clears throat> I don't really know what to call that font, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I liked how they combined both logos. I thought that was a cool twist, and it made for the cool T-shirt. And then having the T and Death be a knife, I thought was a really cool yeah. little yep. additive too. That definitely made it um, like a John Carpenter-ish. Yeah, that's what I thought of too. You know, wrong one to fuck with was a gatefold. Yep, because it was a double record. And I will say I liked that. As far as a package more, because you got to open it up, there was more gory artwork in mm -hmm. there, there was more, you know, and this didn't have that, and that's fine, it is what it is, it's a single album. Um, the record is 10 tracks, 38 minutes, 
I thought that the back of the cover, I thought that was lazy because all they did was put the front cover on the back again. And, yeah, but and it's that's, from a different like perspective. And they've never done it? that on any other. Oh, really? I didn't notice that. Yeah, because I'm like, this seems fucking lazy. Like, why? And every other cover, I mean, like anything else, you have like a front and a back. Yeah, or a, a gate. It's a little entering, different. So. I mean, they have obviously on the bottom, there's the fucking track listings and shit. I think wrong one to fuck with was the first double album. That sounds right. Because it was longer. Like, it was like 50, 54 minutes. Yeah, this one coming in at 37. Yeah, 38. 38. And that's like the the average time for what a lot right. of their albums are. Like History Repeats is 22 minutes. Rain Supreme is 38 minutes. Uh, Descend Into Depravity is 43 minutes. So yeah, like I think Wrong One to Fuck With was their longest record. Yeah. But it's hard to make a long death metal album. Well, even like some of the songs on, the, on the, this album, like the first side... The second and third song, they're like four and a half minutes long. That's a long fucking death metal song, dude. Yeah, especially when you're playing... And all the changes and shit. Yeah, when you're playing that fast at that high of a tempo, it's hard to carry out a song over three minutes. Fuck yeah. Like, you really gotta have quite a bit of changes or something that's gonna keep pulling a listener in. I'd also, in case, before I forget, it's a this particular version of Dying Fetus, which is the same version is wrong one to fuck with is a fucking three piece and to me like a power trio and that kind of shit coming out like it sounds so fucking huge yeah it's like uh christian they're it's, a three piece metal awesome. band that sounds massive but they do it well just on the th- by the three of them you know which is not an easy feat no when you listen to this it's fucking it is tight and when i say tight like everything is fucking perfect on the relapse site, it says that the the philosophy of the band is the same as when they started to write catchy riffs to make it memorable. And he says that whatever style of music you're doing, make it something people want to hear repeatedly, which I think Dying Fetus has done a good job because you can pretty much put on any of their records at any point in time. And if you're a fan of the band, you know you're going to have something good. Yeah, you know what you're getting. Yeah, you don't have to, it's not like the, I use this as an example a lot, but it's not like the Morbid Angel thing where they had that one stinky right. fucking shit record that I all can't remember the name all of. All industrial and shit? Yeah, it was a, should have been titled a different project altogether because it ruined them having a perfect run of records. Because yeah, up sucks. until that point, they were all good. And even the one that came after that was good, but the, that one just fucked it up. Their little experiment. So it's cool to see that. Uh, dying fetus had that and then like if you're a fan and you know about misery index um, they've kind of carried on the same thing like i always thought the misery index dying fetus connection was like the metallica megadeth connection like they formed two great bands out of members separating yeah because the original singer broke off yeah, yeah. and went into misery index and had this great band afterwards which wouldn't have happened and Maybe Dying Fetus wouldn't have been in the echelon that they're in now without that happening. Well, or maybe they would have. I don't know. I, The fact that I like John singing. I do too. But and the, I think that with musically what Misery Index is doing fits their old singer better. And then John accompanies the grooviness to Dying that's Fetus what I'm, a lot that's better. That's the like, than conundrum though is like destroy the op. Destroy the Opposition is my favorite record, but at this point, John is like He's the main... He's the voice that you think of when you think of Dying Fetus at this point. At this point, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And, like, he was on uh, Frozen Soul's new record. He had the guest spot yep. on that one song. And I thought that was a great addition to that song because it gave it that little bit of extra grit that their singer, Chad, doesn't have. Not that he's a bad singer or anything. No, I ain't no, trying I to follow, take that yeah. away from him, but I'm saying like he's got a different vocal style. Well, that's just a huge fucking person to have on your album. Yeah, and think of what that means to them. Mm-hmm. Like, they're an up-and-coming band who is now gone from playing, like, just in the last couple of years. Like, they were not very well-known when their first full-length came out. 
among yeah, metal people, they're they're, and now they're headlining with Dying Fetus yeah, on tours crazy. that they're doing. So I'm sure that's really awesome to them, and especially since they both have new records out this year, then I'm guaranteeing that makes for good touring. Definitely. Um, do you have a favorite track off the new album? It's either it's either say, when the trend ends or Unbridled Fury. Yeah, so Unbridled Fury at the end of the song when that mm-hmm. breakdown happens. Yeah. That was the moment in the album where, because up until that point, I was like, this is awesome, but there's not that like catchy riff shit going on. I yet. agree. And then right when that happened, it, like my ears perked up, and uh-huh. I like I had it playing in my basement. And I looked over, and I'm like, "Oh, this is what I wanted to hear." Yeah. And because I was looking for that, like I always appreciate their little groovy licks that they throw into things. It makes it more. You want to like fucking jump up and start kicking shit. Well, like it's it, cool. Like, I for this particular album, the more so I listened to it four times through, and every time I want to listen to it more. It's kind of one of those. Or like you said, then you start nit, not nitpicking, but finding little yeah, you he, little find little bounce and little yeah. extra fills and like all kinds of shit, man. It's like the Where's Waldo of death metal. That happened to me with Wrong One to Fuck With. Too. Yeah, because definitely. when you hear it initially, you're like, okay, it's dying fetus. It's good, you know. If you, as long as you're a fan, it's good. But then you start picking out like the little nuances to it. And then getting what makes each record sort of individual in its own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, that definitely happened with Make Them Beg for Death. For sure. And it was cool that, like, since uh, we do this in the record store, like, we had early access to it, getting stock in early. So it gives us a little bit of a leg up to get a review out there really quick. But I would say if you've never, for anybody out there that's never listened to Dying Fetus... This isn't a bad place to start. I mean, because I was trying to look at it from that point, like a, as a, like a fresh. If you've never heard it, uh, right. type of thing. And like I said, I mean the fucking the breakdowns in this one are pretty sick. Yeah, I just love the the slammy like smashy style breakdowns yeah, yeah, that yeah. they have that make you want to like stomp a fucking hole through the floor. Yeah, that shit's a lot of fun. Like not, there are bands that do that, obviously, but Dying Fetus has their own sound and twist on it. I think. Oh, definitely. Or if you liked the previous album, Wrong One to Fuck With, you'll not have a problem with this one. I think it takes that and pushes it farther. Yeah, it definitely builds off of it. I haven't heard anybody discredit that previous record in any no, way at all. I, I and I definitely would not. No, it was fucking killer all the way through. And this one's the same way. I mean, I didn't have, you know, sometimes you get an album and you're like, oh, like this song was good, this song was good, but like I could skip this song. There was no skippable tracks. There was no, nothing. No, man, like, I just, you, you just play it. It's you fucking just play badass. It. First side gets over, and then like it. I liked the transition, though, that they did at the end of side A. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Because, like I said, that was where the groove really started to kick in for me. Yeah, and I think, like, for me, I like the second side overall better. And maybe that's just because it sounds fresher, and you know what I mean, yeah. to my ear. I left this the record on my turntable for, like, two days. Yeah. And so in the morning when I would wake up and I'm, like, play doing it. my shit, I'd just throw the needle on, play it, listen to it, take down a few little notes mm-hmm. and stuff. And I mean, it's not like I could... This isn't going to be a Harvard dissection right, of the record. Right. I'm not going to break down into like, oh, so-and-so was doing fucking quarter notes at one oh, minute and 30 yeah, seconds. Because yeah, yeah. like, it, it doesn't matter in the dying It doesn't fetus. matter. You get the groove, you get the slam, you get the breakdowns, you got the thrash, you have the heaviness, the death metal, the artwork suits the album. It's a good package. Oh, it's killer. I would, I would definitely recommend it. I don't, I don't know if I would play a track on here, but I don't know what uh, Relapse's rules and regulations on that are. Well, just come into the fucking store and buy it. Yeah. So definitely, like, if you're local, I have copies available in the store. Um, and if we run out, which I'm sure we will, I can order more. Uh, whether you want CD copies, vinyl copies, tape copies, whatever, just get a hold of the store. I can get them. 
If you are not local, first and foremost, hit up your local record store to try to grab the record or go to Relapse Records directly, pick it up from them. Um, I'm sure you can buy it on Dying Fetus's website as well. Just uh, don't go to a third-party seller when it's a new release like this. Like, Try to get the money to go to the band or your local record store or uh, the people who need it. And yeah, and then they make more and music and it. put it out, you know? Yeah. Like, this shit costs money. I don't right. really have much else on the on the album, I guess, as far as, like... Nope, this episode was going to be short and sweet. You know, it's like fucking... Said, it's Dying Fetus. It's the fucking ACDC of the death metal... <laughs> Hardcore-ish breakdown Yeah, they had their blueprint And yeah. then ran with it It's like the obituary record That came out at the beginning of the year Yep Absolutely nothing wrong with it They stayed in their realm of music yep. And for being a band That's been around for that long Because obituary's been out For a little longer than Dying Fetus Yeah The fact that there are All these bands that are To me are like death metal just giants yeah yeah for they're sure still releasing still good music they're still touring at a high level too that's not like they're doing like five coastal shows or something yeah like obituary's doing... last album was fucking sick dude and they've been touring on it literally since it came out like they have not stopped touring this yeah, entire that's time nuts. which is awesome though because i'm sure they'll tour off it for two years and then they'll take a break and go back to drinking beer and barbecuing like they do yeah and then Coming another up record. with another killer record, and Dying Fetus will probably do the same thing. I feel that. So, yeah, uh, Dying Fetus, Make Them Beg for Death, out today. Oh, uh, one more thing. There are a million different variants. Not a million, but there are a lot of different color variants. Yeah. I've seen... I've seen seven. Seven? I think. Hey, I, I've, seen a, I've seen a few. We have a yellow variant at the store and a blue variant as well. I know that like one of them sold out on the relapse site, but the rest of them are all in stock. But yeah, pick up the record, listen to it, buy it. If you're able to see them on tour, catch them on tour, and uh, check out Frozen Soul on tour with them as well. And yeah, that's all we have for that. Yeah, peace out, people. <laughs>